You're listening to the Phillies Nation podcast with Ty Darbert and Johnny Heller on philliesnation.com. What's going on, everybody? You're listening to another episode of the Phillies Nation podcast. I'm your host, Johnny Heller. Um, it's been not much has been happening. I know I said on last week's episode that maybe the trade uh, for Jose Alvarado would kind of get the ball rolling a little bit. It has not. The Phillies haven't done anything since um, other than make uh, some minor league signings official. So really, that's that's all we're going to have to talk about today because uh, it's been a quiet offseason thus far. But I am joined by my co-host, Ty Dauber. As always, Ty, what's going on? Yeah, like you said, slow off season. That's kind of been the trend of baseball for the last few years. Um, you know, you think back to the Harper Machado off season. Uh, you can remember some of the conversations then, and people were saying things like, "Oh man, can the baseball off season ever get any slower than this off season?" And Major League Baseball said, yes, we can actually somehow get slower. And that's kind of what we've seen. I know the Padres have made big trades, blockbuster trades for really good pitchers. But for the most part, it's been slow. And there's a lot of big name. All, almost all the big name free agents are still out there right now. JT Realmuto, of course, among them. They, he, he is still out there in free agency. So the Phillies, while they have not signed him just yet, um, they haven't lost out on him just yet either. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Of course, we'll be talking about that whenever we get a little more information. But as of now, it doesn't seem like the big name free agents are anywhere close to signing. But the Phillies did finally make official four minor league signings with invitations to spring training with the major league club and that's what we're going to talk about today that because that that's going to be an important approach and something that they're going to have to hit this offseason if they want to compete the phillies if they're not willing to spend a ton of money on free agents to fill their gaps and to round out the edges of the roster it's going to come down to which of these which of these at the margins signings can really hit. They they did a lot of them last offseason um especially for the bullpen and it didn't seem like many of them really worked out very well as everyone saw last year in 2020. So in 2021 as as we get to a new year, this is our first pod of the new year. 2021 will have to be different on those signings for the Phillies if they really want to succeed. So we'll get into that strategy, talk about the players they are bringing in. And while it isn't, it isn't JT Real Muto news, I'm excited to get into some of it with you, Johnny. So why don't we do that? Yeah, sure. So uh, they signed Christian Betancourt, a catcher who uh, was with them in spring training last year. Um, just because, as we, as we as we talked about before, they they don't feel that uh, Rafael Marchand is a major league catcher right now. So really, they have one guy on the roster, and that's Andrew Knapp. So obviously, they they hope to sign Real Muto. Um, we'll see if that happens. But Betancourt, I don't think he's played since 2017 in the majors. Um, I know what team was trying him out as a reliever. I can't remember, but he did get maybe the Padres as a pitcher. I think it was the Padres. Um, he was bad as a pitcher. Uh, like, still, like, it doesn't mean all that much, I don't think, uh, because if you're heading into a season with Andrew Knapp as your starting catcher, like, if Christian Betancourt is your backup catcher, that's just, again, you're not going to win a lot of games um, when you're taking such a step down there. Yeah. Um, they signed a couple of relief pitchers, Natalie Feliz, former Rookie of the Year, um, back with the Texas Rangers, I think in 2010, if I'm not mistaken. Um, bounced around a little bit since then. Um, obviously, just taking a chance on him. Uh, Michael Yanoa, another guy, uh, another reliever, I should say. Um, right-handed pitcher, last appeared with the Chicago White Sox in 2017. Um, was 
I think lighting it up a little bit in the Dominican League this year. Like yeah, uh, the D- Dominican winter bit. Dominican Winter League. He's been pitching well. I think he had thirteen appearances, uh, ERA in somewhere in the twos. So not a huge huge sample size, but maybe they liked what they saw out of his arm better than the last time he appeared in the major league. So they took a took a flyer on Enoa there, um, and. Feliz has also been pitching in a winter league, so um, may, maybe they like what they they saw there as well. The two guys who haven't pitched in the majors in a little while, but maybe they can kind of be part of the redemption story for their careers. And that's probably what the Phillies are hoping. Um, maybe they've added some velocity or something like that, and Phillies are hoping they can they can bring that into the major league team and kind of have a bit of a comeback with those players. Yeah. Um, And they also brought back Ronald Torres uh, utility infielder. He made, I think he was in like two or three games for them last year, seven at bats, Um, just kind of a depth piece. They uh, in terms of having already having guys on the bench, what's his name from yeah, the Yankees that they picked in the Rule Five draft. Uh, Holder. Holder, yes. Uh, shortstop. Look, I mean, right as of now, would be you know on the major league roster. In the beginning of the 2021 season, um, so again, Trey's represents death or not death, depth. Um, so that's a. Nice little slip there, but uh, yeah, uh, like I know we want to say like, oh, these signings need to work for the Phillies for them to succeed. Uh, I don't think we should give credence to it at all because it's it's not a strategy that ever works for anyone. I don't really think like 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 Neftali Feliz figuring it out when he's in his thirties after not being good for however many years, like that's not the key to success for the Phillies in 2021. Um, so like, while I don't know, hitting striking gold on, on some of these guys could make some kind of difference. I just, like, I don't really see it happening. I, I don't know. No, and I then, completely, I completely agree. Like this is not some strategy that is likely to work if they're not going to invest in more surefire things. Um, players that are more of a guarantee to be contributors then they're probably not going to be good if if they're not willing to go get those players but last year you specifically saw it with the bullpen the additions they made were mostly just minor league deals um you know bringing in a a blake parker bringing in who, who was one of the few that was productive at least to uh start his season um but bringing in a Francisco, Bud Norris. a Bud Norris, a Francisco Liriano, a Drew Storin, um, when those are your major acquisitions to the bullpen, it is not usually going to work unless you somehow strike gold, like you said. And I'm not saying it's a good strategy. It's the right strategy. It's likely to work, but it might have to, if they're not going to get the right pieces like that there, maybe it's not one of these four players that turns into something, something really productive into someone that's really productive on the field for them. But unless they continue making moves like Alvarado, like, like getting Alvarado and uh, or make making a, a trade like they did for, Jose Alvarez a couple of years ago, or even just bringing Jose Alvarez back on a free agent contract. Like the, the minor league deals are what, if they're going to be giving a ton of those out, like they did last, they just think about last season. They had like 70 something players in camp because they were just hoping that they would kind of strike gold and it didn't really happen. And it might've been the reason that they missed the playoffs. Well, I think, I think last year, the th- the thing about last year, like yeah, they they messed up. Obviously, they they should have dipped into the luxury tax and and signed a couple guys. But um, I think we have to remember also, and this isn't a defense of that strategy whatsoever. But um, in a 162 game season where there's 
you know, no pandemic. I think the plan was to, um, you know, have a bunch of these guys because they they trusted their minor league depth. And, and this is something we've talked about a bunch and something we talked about before last season, too. They had a bunch of guys who um, were pretty much major league ready. Right. So um, when you have those guys, you have the Connor Brogdon and and uh, your Judge Romero and, 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 you know, Ty, you can name all of them. Um, right now if you want but when you have those guys and you you head into a season you can say all right we're gonna have a minor league season two these guys can kind of figure it out a little bit we'll see who's pitching well in, in april and may down in triple a down in double a and we'll try these guys out maybe ramon rosa doesn't start the season in the majors maybe he starts it in triple a he comes up in may and he's it's different because he he had more work against you know triple a hitters before he he came up to the majors. Um, I'm not saying it would have worked out well for them, but I'm, I think that is part of the reason that, or that's, that is the reason they didn't um, just like sign guys. So I don't, I don't really know that their strategy, like, I don't, I don't, I prefer to think that they didn't just think like, Oh, you know, Bud Norris, you know, maybe, maybe he'll find something like, I, I don't think so. I think like, I think maybe the Liriano signing, like he had a good year in where was he in in 2019 was it Pittsburgh I think he was in Pittsburgh and he was good he might have been traded mid-season uh somewhere else but he was good uh out of the bullpen so I think you know he ended up not not pitching for them but like maybe something like that was uh, a sign they hope to work out but it was because of their minor league depth and now I think they have a better idea um at least a little bit better of an idea heading into 2021 of like who is going to make an impact who isn't um, I guess we still don't really know, uh, like, is there going to be minor league season right away? Like, how is any of that? Yeah, I, I think Baseball America is reporting that um, lower leagues, I, I think single A and double A will be starting later. I, I believe that is the report as of now. So we'll have to see how that develops um, as we get a little closer. But to kind of build on your point there, um, you know, in a bigger season, I think you're right, Connor Brogdon. Uh, I think he's probably closer to what we saw in the last handful of games at the end of the season. And if they give him a little more time to figure it out, but in a 60 game season, you don't have a bunch of time to figure it out. At the same time, they were relying a lot on some of those, not exactly, you know, the Bud Norris's of the world, but they were relying a little more on the the veteran arms down the stretch when it was clear it wasn't working instead of calling up, you know, a, a Damon Jones. The, Garrett Clevenger gets one appearance. Um, so it's impossible to know what happens if they play 102 well, more games. But to play, they, to play, they were relying on the veterans that were clearly not working. Sure, but also, like, I think um... – Again, I, I don't disagree. Like, I think last year was was not handled well in, in terms of the bullpen and in terms of the lack of, of guys brought in. But they, again, they were entering the season counting on, like, we'll be able to see how Clevenger looks in double AA, A, triple A, see if he can get his control back or, you know, not walk eight guys per nine or if he wasn't walking that many, but he was, you know. Um, so things like that. Like, let's see if these guys can smooth out you know, what they need to so that we can rely on them later in the season. They didn't have that. I know they had the alternate site, but it was also a two month span. So uh, I don't think, I don't know how much you can fault them in season. Like, yeah, they probably, I guess in hindsight, it's easier to say, yeah, they should have um, just, just, you know, called up Damon Jones. Let's see. Let's see. Like that's what happened with, with uh, Jojo Romero. I don't, I don't think anyone really expected, I don't know within the organization, but I know none of us really expected him to make an impact. And I know he struggled down the stretch, but they gave him a chance and all of a sudden it was like, Oh, this guy's blowing 98. Um, like awesome. Like he can make an impact. And, and now they know that in the future, maybe he can make an impact. But um, I, I think we need to, to acknowledge this when considering this off season, because, it's different this offseason. I think they, they do have a bit of a better idea of like what should the young guys can do something. I still like I think Ramon Rosso, they probably see him as a you know a long man, a swing man, kind of make a spot start if he's um whereas they probably see Connor Brogdon as back end, you know, probably a back end op- of of the bullpen option. Um and they they traded a couple of guys, they traded Addison Russ to the Yankees for for David Hale, they traded uh Garrett Clevenger in the Alvarado trade 
So they don't have as many of those guys. So if if this offseason, if they they treat it the same way as last offseason, like that's like I think it's even worse than than how they went about last offseason because it it's not that that's not strategy. That's just saying that's just throwing in the towel. So I I think you know while it's important to to look at these guys and say hmm, I wonder if you know maybe Natali Feliz can can uh, make some kind of lower level impact. Um, it's also like that <laughs> they they can't they can't do this. They have to um, you know they have to to sign guys and 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 trade for guys. And I I think um, oh man I'm blanking. Uh, Robert Murray, he writes for Fan Sided, right? Um, I'm pretty sure in his, I'm pretty sure it was him. Um, in his, he had a column after with a, a bunch of different stuff, but mentioning the Alvarado trade, and and I think he mentioned that the the Phillies are probably going to do more moves like that. So whether it be trades or you know, you know, your two million, three million dollar signings rather than um, you know the 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 Liam Hendricks of the world. Uh, but even that is, is different than, oh, let's give Neftali Feliz a contract. Like now, now you're right. You're right. Like finding more reliable $2 million, $3 million deals, or having prospects be ready to come up, um, when you can identify that they are indeed ready is a more valuable way and a more sure of a thing way to make sure that you're going to get better performance, I think. At the same time, you think back to two years ago, there are ways where you can get these kind of signings that really do impact your team. Uh, the Phil- you think of some of the moves the Phillies made even in season in 2019. Uh, Brad Miller was playing in the minor leagues with the Yankees, I think. Uh, they pick up Mike Morin from the Twins. They get Blake Parker. Uh, and next thing you know, you have maybe the best bench bat in the league and the fourth best second half bullpen ERA down the stretch. Like, that's, I mean, that's that's if it, you check baseballreference.com. It isn't. You, so it isn't. You know that is not to say that that is not to say <laughs> that Neftali Feliz is going to come in and be like he was when he was the rookie of the year and pitching in the World Series. Uh, and he's going to bolster the bullpen and and save the season but there is something to being able to identify some of these some of these players that oh if you see their arms are a little more lively in the in the winter league and you think there's something there if you can hit on those that could be a huge addition to your team it really could because I, I think we saw it in 2019 yes the Phillies did miss the playoffs yes they collapsed but some of the best performances down the stretch came from their fourth best, yeah, second half those, bullpen those ERA were, and, those and Brad guys Miller. They, those weren't guys that, I mean, I guess like Brad Miller, you know, they got from the minors, but I don't know, like, like Mike Blake Morin Parker and Jer- was, Mike Morin Blake and Blake Parker Jared was having an, has, was having a pretty good year in, in Minnesota, if I remember correctly. Like, it's not like these guys came out of nowhere. I don't know. Like, like I, I think it's a little bit different. I did like, I, like I, that's where I think it's like, oh, you're two million dollars signing, and like we're we're pretty much talking about the same thing here, right? It's like it's like finding value where, um, you know, for a team that apparently is not willing to spend money, we're finding value where you don't just put out that much. But um, I yeah, Bring I mean, back Nick Vincent. We we've talked about this before. Like, obviously, the easiest and most efficient way of making sure you're going to have good players is just spending the money for them and outbidding what other teams will give good players. And that doesn't even mean signing just the Bryce Harper's of the world for $330 million. That could be identifying a good reliever that everybody else only wants to pay $2 million and you'll give them three and a half million dollars. And that's going to help your team. But the, Sometimes a president and a GM, their hands are are tied. If the ownership is not willing to do that, John Middleton has not made it clear that he's willing to do that. Um, he he said in his his press conference at the end of the season, you know, he doesn't know what the governor is going to do or what things will look like next season with fans. So, maybe it doesn't look like they're going to have 
huge payroll. So it's going to come down to whether the front office can identify players kind of taking the money ball approach and finding players that can outperform the contracts that they're getting. And that's probably not the, the safest way to play. It's probably not the best way to play, but if, um, if the overall strategy of the team from all the way at the top is not going to just let them outbid other teams like they did when they got Bryce Harper, arguably their best player, obviously one of their best players. Uh, They just went out and gave him the best contract of all the teams out there. If you can't do that for every single player, because you're not being given permission to have the biggest payroll, you're going to have to try to find good deals and hope that, uh, some of these, some of these players will be better than other people expect. Like, like, um, that that's just the way that it. That's the way it's going to have to happen for the Phillies if this is the way they're going to operate. Now, if they can go and trade for Jose Alvarado's like players like that, go if they can trade Luis Garcia for Jose Alvarez or Garrett Clevenger for um for Alvarado you know if 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 every move is going to be them trading a worse reliever for a better reliever like they should do that and that is pretty obvious but um not every not every deal is going to be like that so they're going to have to get creative with it and maybe these four minor league deals that we mentioned that the Phillies made official maybe none of them will be the ones that work but I think with the restrictions, it seems like they're going to have, uh, they're going to have to find something like that that does work. Yeah. I mean, I, again, they're not, yeah, you're, you're right. Um, we'll see. I mean, it's also like, this has been the slowest off season, off season ever, as we mentioned at the top of the pod, pod. So it's like, they're not the only team who haven't, hasn't really done anything. So I, I mean, while most indications go to show that they're not going to spend any money, um, who knows, like, especially we've said this before, if they sign Real Muto, like maybe they're given a little bit more freedom in, in putting together a team that can win it in 2021, um, which would definitely make it easier on them not having to rely on these guys. But I mean, definitely something to watch and and, and to see what they continue, you know, doing if, if they, you know, maybe they sign Matt Harvey to compete for the, <laughs> the rotation. Um, I don't know. Has, has Tim Lincecum retired yet? I think so. I think he has. Uh, didn't he try to come back with the Angels and it didn't really work? Yeah, he didn't. He didn't who's the, didn't who's like well, the greatest? But... Is there a greatest like late career comeback out of retirement or after a, a big hiatus that you could think of? Like, I guess Pedro comes to mind um, with, the, with the Phillies. Yeah. Who was – wasn't Scott Casimir, like – like, didn't he struggle for a while or – then he kind of came back and was good? Yeah. Like, he I didn't – so. from – Rich Hill, maybe? Like, Casimir was good in 2008. Correct. And then he wasn't really good again until 2013. I mean, Ryan Matson. like, Matson was out of baseball for three years and then was good enough to – to be like one of the worst postseason pitchers ever, and you yeah. know that, yeah. <laughs> um, no, but but Rich Hill was playing in the independent. He was playing for the Long Island Ducks, and then he came back and was a pretty key part for a lot of good Dodgers teams. So I don't know. You're right that it's unlikely that these minor league signings are. May, that they even make a difference, that they matter almost at all. But that isn't to say that you can't strike gold sometimes. Sure. We'll see. Who do you think who do you think is the most likely of um of Torres, you know, uh Feliz and Bethancourt to make the major league roster or to make uh, the impact for the major league team? I would say either Feliz or, you know, just out of like like Bethancourt, like I they can't you imagine they, they if, can't go. <laughs> he's yeah, only it's can. it's the like absolute disaster situation if he's on the major league team. Yeah. At least outside yeah. of like injuries, right? Yeah. And and, and Ter- I don't think there's really a spot for Torres. 
as the roster currently stands. Um, we'll see. He got who he knows. Got, he was on it at the end of last season at points. So that's true. That's um, true. We still there's still still a lot of unanswered questions about this yeah. team. We don't know who's playing center field. We don't know who's playing shortstop. We don't we know don't who's e- catching. We don't know if there's a DH. <laughs> oh we don't know if the first I mean, baseman sure will be ready to play the field to start the season. Um, and did you say catcher? I said catcher. But, and there's you know. about two, two or three definite relievers. Yeah. And we don't we don't know if the left fielder can play left field. That is also true. Oh, and we don't, we don't know, know if the third baseman can play third base. <laughs> like you said, we don't know if the first baseman can play first base. We don't know if the shortstop can play shortstop. And <laughs> we don't know if the fourth and fifth starters will be able to handle a full season of starting. <laughs> a lot of questions, but that's what makes a team like this really interesting. <laughs> I, w- I would say there are a lot yeah. of questions, but there's also a lot of talent on this team. There's enough talent for them to go for it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But the Phillies could miss know. the playoffs again, or they could win the World Series this year. And I don't think either would really shock me. World Series obviously being a little more I would surprising. Be shocked if they would. <laughs> if You're telling me the if they, team. if they, I mean, yeah, I agree. If they re-sign Real Muto and sign yeah. another starter, it would not surprise me if they had a good team, as long as people are are hitting well. They had, I mean, they had a good, they had a really good team last year outside of the bullpen. They did. They like really they, did. They that lineup led, was pretty I'm pretty insane. sure they led in like, as many games as the Dodgers led. They just, <laughs> and, um, you know, if, if, if Eflin continues to figure it out a little bit, like you have a legitimate top three in your rotation. And, um, they, they need a but, fit. Yeah, I, I wrote about this for Phillies Nation. Uh, I think they need another starter because Spencer Howard is far from a sure thing in the rotation yeah. because he's going to be on an innings limit. He has not thrown more than around 120 innings in his career, and that was in 2018 when he pitched yeah. uh, in the regular season. Yeah. And Last year he pitched, in what, 30 innings? 24, 30 innings. 24 and a third. Yeah. And then yeah, the so, year before he threw ninety ish. Yeah, Tim Tim Kelly, uh, also Phillies Nation, wrote about Adam Wainwright, which I I like. I think he makes a lot of sense because he's not really he a natural Philly. Leave, like he, he, I don't think he oh, will. Oh my god! I don't think he's that's gonna. We should have. <laughs> I, I, I don't next think week he's on, going next to week on the Phillies Nation podcast. We're gonna talk about natural Phillies and uh, you. Know, no, stay tuned, but... but no, but I, I like, it I doesn't... Like Wainwright Wainwright's not he's, leaving. He's like Molina. Like, they're not going to leave. What if they both leave? What if, what if the Phillies sign both of them? Um, That would be pretty underwhelming. Pretty cool. That would that'd be an underwhelming <laughs> yeah. offseason, I think. Hey, what if Molina's the third string? If he's the third <laughs> string... If he's the third string catcher, <laughs> then all right, but... No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, no, they're not. I would be shocked. I would be more surprised if they signed Molina than if they, you know, brought back Real Muto or, or like Christian Betancourt started opening day. Like I'd be shocked if Molina was here, but or in Philadelphia. But yeah, yeah I, it's I have no idea. Like you could show me eight different iterations of a starting lineup, and I could pick any of them for opening day. Like I have no idea. Yeah, um, um, especially does because... look like George Springer. George Springer might be a Blue Jay, which yeah, would that's... kind of throw a wrench in the in the Mets' offseason plan, I think. Um, yeah. Or maybe, I don't know. Where do you think Rio Muto is most likely to go at this point? He's going to – I think he's he's most likely to resign with the Phillies. Outside I, of that, um, if, the, if the Yankees – if DJ LeMay, Hugo somewhere else, I could see the Yankees – uh, making a run at at Real Muto just for the sake of like signing someone, and they're the Yankees. But uh, I could see the Nationals signing him. I could see, I don't know. Do you have a sleeper team? There's just the L- Los Angeles Angels. I thought that too. I I was thinking that. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't know. I do think he'll uh-huh. end up being back, and that'll that'll really help us figure out where the direction of this team going forward, yes. though. Like it really well, does come down not, to that one it's, player. Yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, you know, I feel like any day. I mean, even though as slow moving as it as it has been, like I feel like I could look at my phone after we stop recording and and see how JT Realmuto signed with the Phillies. Yeah, I think I think Real Muto. This is just a hunch thing. I think it's going to be one of those things where there's not a lot of smoke, and then all all of a sudden one day it all happens. You know, you think? I don't think it'll be like like we're tracking planes or anything. Private jets. What? We are in a pandemic. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> that might have an impact on it. But. Yeah, I don't know. That's all I got for today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, next week maybe we'll have some something maybe to talk about other than minor league signings but maybe not maybe we'll have some more minor league signings to talk about but until then uh everyone thank you for listening and stay safe and healthy in the new year talk to you next week you can listen to the phillies nation podcast with ty daubert and johnny heller every wednesday on philliesnation.com and all streaming services